Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Remember when I said last week there was a spike in listeners over in Ireland? Well, I've just noticed three reviews from Ireland on the Irish Apple Podcast Store. I do find myself wondering if that was what kickstarted the algorithm. So a huge thank you to Laura Cooley, who said, not only is Neil an insightful and engaging host, why thank you, (laughs) but he also interviews some of the most interesting people in the tech scene. My go-to podcast for any time of the day. Uh, Meanwhile, Lizzle Traz said, great podcast for tech lovers. And Ed Ryan said, led by an engaging host, this podcast offers some of the most insightful and informative conversations with tech and business leaders. Ooh. <laughs> I'd love to know how it all works, but a huge thank you for the kind words. I, I promise you, I won't let it go to my head. I'll keep my feet on the ground and keep reaching for the stars. But I would love to know how it all works. But it does kind of highlight how important those ratings and reviews are to this podcast. I think those ratings and reviews are quite literally, and I honestly believe that those ratings and reviews are quite literally the secret to the success of this Daily Tech podcast. So if you do find yourself with a moment on the number 72 bus to the office, take a look down at that smartphone and just leave a quick rating. But if it is your first episode and you hate my voice already, maybe just hold back from leaving that review. Step away from the rating button, sir. Step away from the rating button. Seriously, though, a huge thank you for being here. And I hope you're all going to be interested in learning more about where artificial intelligence is actually being used within enterprises and in their most precious asset, which is content. For example, research firm Cognilica says that between documents, images, emails, online data and videos, up to 90% of the content in the enterprise is in the form of unstructured data, which is growing at an incredible 55 to 65% every year. Now, at the Abbey Content IQ Summit held, I think it was in October over in Nashville, attendees were able to learn about the use of AI to transform process along with unstructured and structured data. And that's incredibly important because if you think about any customer-facing process, It always consists of unstructured content. But I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I suspect that most of you listening, including myself, was not at that event in Nashville in October. So we essentially missed out on those insights and those conversations. But as it's panto season here in the UK, I'm going to say, oh, no, you haven't, (laughs) because I've invited them here onto the podcast today to tell me a little bit more about exactly what those conversations were about. And Abby Senior Vice President of Marketing, Bruce Orcutt, is going to share how businesses are leveraging AI-enabled skills to understand enterprise content and processes. But I've rambled on far too much as it is, so let's get Bruce onto the show right now. We'll find out more. So a massive warm welcome to the show, Bruce. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are? And what uh, you do. Yeah, wonderful, Neil. Thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm Bruce Orcutt, and I'm Vice President of Product Marketing here at Abbey. I've been with Abbey for roughly around five years. And overall, I'm responsible for the go-to-market and the execution of our product strategies um, for Abbey globally. And roughly been in the IT product um, technology industry for over 20 years mainly in the area of uh, intelligent automation and uh, document processing. I've worked in OER, um, classification, natural language processing, and helping build applications and solutions uh, for enterprises that are built around transforming business documents into some level of business value. Fantastic. And one of the reasons I'm excited to get you on the podcast today is because I want people listening to gain from your insights around how artificial intelligence is transforming and processing unstructured and structured data. But can you just set the scene and maybe tell listeners where most enterprises are now and why AI is so important as we prepare to enter a new decade? 
Well, it's, it's a remarkable time and the innovation that's coming to market from, you know, innovation startups to AI centric um, development shops to historic legacy applications. It's amazing the amount of innovation that's happening around AI and the ability to automate cognitive capabilities and automate a lot of the manual tasks that humans have been doing for years and years and years. So it's a really a transformative time and it's super exciting to be a, be a part of this. But really what's happening that we're, we're seeing in the market is this need for this overabundance of content that have been, uh, enterprises have been inundated with. And as companies are now in more competitive markets and more competitive environments where they truly are competing for customers on time and responsiveness and services, they need to be able to be reactive and responsive in near real time with their entire value proposition and solution has to be able to react to what customers expect, which is a, an expectation of now. So when I am a, if I'm a bank and I need to fund a loan or transaction or line of credit, my customer has many, many options. And if they are waiting for me to approve that transaction, they may have already been in, engaging with three of my competitors who will do it in real time or near real time. So the opportunities are really tremendous now uh, for AI to help accelerate and make better, faster decisions um, where maybe, you know, manual or human-centric processes would have been too slow for today's consumers and today's buyers. Now, I did recently read IDC's Future of Work survey, which I don't know if you've seen, but it estimated that <laughs> contribution of digital workers will grow by 50% in two years. And at that same time, 75% of decision makers globally said that organization is struggling to recruit digital skills. So the question I've got to ask is, how do you think organizations can resolve that skills gap and prepare to work beside digital workers? So it's an interesting transformation that we're seeing is the, yeah. the, the growth of, of this, what we call digital skills, and it's really an adoptive term that, you know, with the RPA emergence of RPA vendors and the simplified platforms that people can use and leverage to be able to automate specific human tasks or historic human tasks um, is really changing the way that people are, are, are recruiting employees now and, and recruiting uh, new, new um, investments in their, in their enterprises to help automate much of these processes that would be focused around someone sitting in a cube that would be forced with moving information from system A to move it to system B so we can make decisions in system C. Now this is now being handled by a robotic process by a, a digital worker, a digital skill that now is trained and understands how to now do these tasks that were historically done uh, as mundane, repetitive tasks by humans. And so this, this recruitment of these new skills is really important and strategic because now these are really repetitive, automated tasks now that can be applied to very specific problems that now free up your human labor and your human capital to be reallocated to more valuable processes and transactions. And, and within the IDC study, it also showed that, that the, the actual knowledge workers themselves were celebrating these innovations because it makes them more effective and more capable and, and moves them to focusing on tasks that were much more meaningful for their business and for their longevity at their companies. So it's a really great trend we're seeing. But again, it's, it's about how do companies repeat and automate tasks that may have been um, mundane or considered highly um, highly structured from a human standpoint and make a digital robot or digital skill or digital worker able to transform and take on that task um, and, and do that in a more repeatable, automated and accurate fashion. I'm glad you mentioned robotic process automation there because it, it does send out mixed messages. On one side of the coin, we have people that might be concerned that they could lose their job. And on the other side, of course, it's actually freeing people from those mundane, repetitive tasks and robotic tasks and allowing them to actually focus on their, their human skills. And that's how progress is made. But how do you see the future of automation and the impact of, ro of RPA affecting the enterprise? Well, it's going to have a profound impact because we don't see uh, robotic, the, the trend of robotic process automation slowing because of the value that customers derive from helping or, or the vision they see for automating specific transactions and processes and, and removing this work from their human workforce into this digital workforce. So we see that, that growing. 
And there is this natural concern from the, from you know that we would be replacing human workers, but we haven't seen that trend actually come to fruition yet. But it's always a concern. But for the most part, these these the, the growth of RPA has really made the job satisfaction of the workers that are impacted by this much higher because now they can take tasks and work that they would be viewed as repetitive or that's more mundane, that's not not really helping them accomplish their their own personal business goals. And now they can build a robot themselves and automate that task to then move their focus to other areas of work. Where we've seen challenges with RPA is when we move to more cognitive capabilities where we have to understand now when you know moving moving a data from a Excel spreadsheet into a rich application or into a process application is one thing that a robot is very, very easy to configure and very successfully will implement for you. But now if you're starting to look at data and context and relevance and relationships of information locked within documents, that becomes more complex. And so they need some help in building their solutions around uh, those capabilities, which is where companies like Abby and, and others in the intelligent automation space help make those robots, what we call make the robots smarter. And so we can now expand that use case for robotic process automation from just moving data from one system to another system or capturing data from screens and then putting it into another application to actually understanding what's the context, relevance, entities, and relationships of information that will help drive the business process and make a smarter decision down down the road. So um, significant opportunity for all the vendors here, and especially for the their consumers and customers of these applications. But uh, there is a there is a limit now that now we see more cognitive uh, capabilities that are required, and this is where AI will certainly transform the market um, as we move forward in this space. And there is a big concern about jobs, but ironically, I feel that businesses that see it as a cost-cutting opportunity by implementing this technology, they could quickly get left behind because it's businesses that combine the best of technology and the best of the human employees. They're the ones that are going to succeed in the future, aren't they? Absolutely. It is a parallel track. And we see, we already see in areas like insurance and in retail lending and banking where they are competing on speed in their own promotion to customers saying, I will, I, we will onboard you in five minutes and fund this new, this new line of credit or this loan. We will onboard you in five minutes to ensure your insurance is up to speed and, and you have, you're covered by this automobile coverage or uh, your homeowner's insurance. They are competing on speed and you can't just rely on your, your own manual staff of, of human workers to be able to keep up with that volume of transactions. And as we move to digital, it's absolutely a parallel track that if you, if your business is going to be focused in the digital world and digital transformation is something that you're, you're keen on adopting, then this parallel track of having smart robots with intelligent automation, complementing your human labor and staff is absolutely critical for competitive advantage. And much of what we're talking about today is available to businesses right now and not just things of the future or crystal ball gazing. So do you have any examples of how businesses are leveraging AI-enabled skills to understand enterprise content and processes to make those intelligent business decisions? Yeah, absolutely. We are seeing it uh, happen a lot on the insurance side where there'll be a first notification of loss where people are submitting content related to claims. And with the, the whole goal is as a claim is submitted, there's usually some level of trailing document and trailing information, whether it's a repair bill, whether it's an invoice for a rental company, a rental car, or replacement parts or things like that, where we can now take that right off the mobile channel. As that user receives information, they can leverage their mobile device to submit that information into that claims process. The technologies that we have available to us are able to understand what the, the important, meaningful data from those that content that they're providing and help that business application make an immediate decision around, okay, do I refund this person's this amount? Do I adjudicate this claim and pay them back for the expenses? And, and how fast are we moving forward in executing that claim? And we see a significant impact in, in that side of the world. On, in, we look at the RPA space and just intelligent automation has really erupted in the accounts payable financial, financial department world where now invoices are coming in from various sources globally 
We're able to understand those invoices, understand the meaning of the data within the invoices, extract the tables, match the tables to the purchasing systems, and eliminate that human labor and human cost of processing an invoice, a purchase order, a sales order. And what this information is, we can understand that in near real time. And that's really having dramatic benefits on those accounts payable and invoice automation processes and departments because it's now really truly freeing those 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 employees up to respond to other more business critical tasks, which are fixing exceptions, making sure that uh, everything is validated to the point where they don't have any errors or not paying um, paying vendors inappropriately or there's no fraud. So we're really helping to complement those business processes with this technology. So for sure, a lot of growth and a lot of opportunity. Now, you recently hosted the Content IQ Summit in Nashville, which is a great place for a conference. In fact, I'm talking to you today in a Country Music Hall of Fame t-shirt I got from the last conference I, that I went to. But from all Wonderful. the conversation, but from all the conversations you had um, there and overheard from attendees, were there any trends or common themes from that event? Well, one trend that really blew me away that was interesting was the ability of some of the main consulting firms that have a history in tax and audit, how they are using technologies from companies like Abby to help them in preparing and understanding and provide tax and audit services to their customers. But what what happens in an audit in the tax environment is they use these technologies to understand purchase orders, sales orders, like things we spoke about earlier. And what they've realized is they can now use this technology and these trained models that they've used to help benefit their own existing business to go help their consulting businesses as they engage other customers in other areas of their business. So understanding for a tax and audit purpose, understanding W-2s, K-1s, different types of tax documents, that pay stubs, things like that, that you would see within a tax environment. Now applying that to other consulting sides of their business has been absolutely uh, explosive. Um, so seeing those system integrators and uh, consulting firms be able to sort of eat their own dog food, as we say here in the States, that they've built applications around helping automate their own customer problems for what they were providing to their their core customers in their tax and audit business, now repurposing that technology for their consulting businesses to go out and provide better services for their consulting clients. So we're seeing a tremendous reuse, tremendous amount of collaboration in the space where we see people building internal um, an internal knowledge bases of, of digital workers and digital skills that they can be repeated and used across the enterprise. And it's no longer the siloed aspect of having a capture or a uh, image imaging system that was built for one purpose, for one solution. We see it, the, the propagation of this being provided to the entire enterprise and multiple departments leveraging digital skills and digital workers that are already pre-trained by other departments and reusing that. So that's the area that we saw a lot of collaboration on at our event in Nashville. And that's where we see a significant amount of this growth and demand for this technology because now it's available more to the masses Whereas in the past, it was built for a specific application and specific line of business and held to the side. And now it's more readily available to all of of the potential consumers of this technology. And we will have people listening all over the world and also from multiple industries. So are your technologies targeted towards any particular industry or or any uh, particular markets and regions? Or do you serve right across the board? It's absolutely global, and uh, that's one of the interesting aspects that we see now with this globalized economy, that we may see purchases coming from Spain that are actually directed towards American banks. And so the ability to be able to process the same documents in Portuguese, Spanish, English, and French is absolutely important. We We see transportation industries with shared service centers globally, we're processing customs declarations where we are in any, you know, multitude of languages. We support 240 of, uh, languages within our product, but multi- multiples of languages, multiple different formats, document types. So anytime there's a document, is something that we get involved in helping to automate. But globally, it's financial services, transportation, logistics, and insurance are our largest areas of interest we get from customers. But we have horizontal solutions that we spoke about accounts payable and invoice processing, which 
any business that has that has an invoice that receives an invoice benefits from this technology as well. So it's really a global solution that's cross industry. And for the business leader listening, thinking, well, this all sounds great, but what about the ROI and what about the business benefits of incorporating process intelligence into my organization? What would you say to that person that's listening? Well, the ROIs have really come down and have been accelerated because of the, the AI capabilities. The systems now learn and they are ease, more easily trained and they're not, not structured around rigid business rules. So actually, the ROIs are extremely fast. And which, which really makes the uh, justification and the need uh, to move quickly much more valuable for these, for these decision makers. But what they also have to realize is that there's so much information within their enterprise that they really don't necessarily have a, they think they may understand what's going on, but they truly don't have a visual way of understanding truly how does this process flow? What steps are actually happening? What is the best route for this process? And what steps of content and in information is required at each step in the process? And, what, and where are my breakdowns in that? What we are able to do now is provide this as a visual um, representation of the entire process. And then areas where they have issues and challenges can be addressed with real data and ongoing monitoring. So it's really transformative for the business owner that they have this now real understanding of what's happening. And how can I correct this? Or if I need to make corrective measures, what will those impact of that corrective measures be down the road? So uh, process intelligence is extremely important and critical to this growth. And, I, and we see our, uh, our target line of business owners and our target buyers really focusing on the process side, which helps them justify investments on the content side. And before you came on the podcast today, I did check out the Abbey Twitter feed just to see if there's any big news stories or anything we could talk about. Sure. And I did notice that uh, Abbey is 30 years old. So 30 years of bringing innovative ideas and technologies to business. So you probably weren't there for the full 30 years, but I'm curious, what are the biggest changes that you, the company has seen in that time, do you think? Uh, it's interesting. The, the company is 30, um, and many of our core technologies as it relates to OCR technologies have been well-established and have been the market leader for a number of years. But what we are seeing now, where, where things are, have transformed, is the speed of innovation. Before, you would, do a re you, know, you would do a release every 18 months to two years, and, and uh, customers be, would be struggling to keep up with that. Well, now we innovate in, in like most industries do, innovate exceptionally fast with new technologies and new uh, infrastructures that, that have to keep up with the demand of today's buyers and users. And so the speed of innovation is really what's driving us uh, going forward. And the ability now to transform, just understanding any piece of information, any data stream of information, transforming that into meaningful context and relevance is always a wonderful challenge in that we keep focusing on our time and investment in understanding the, this, this challenge so that we can help our customers automate and accelerate any business process that they, they think uh, needs to be, um, be addressed with this type of technology. And looking forward, I mean, we're, back, we're preparing to enter 2020 and a whole new decade. Is there anything in particular that excites you about emerging technologies and also the opportunities that that will bring to both Abbey and your consumers? Well, we're seeing this a trend of what we're, we believe will be these smart platforms. And I think the trend now is truly understanding, because we understand most of this context and relevance that's, that's locked within documents, how do we expose that to broader systems and applications? And so we see this emergence of smart platforms where customers can consume a platform from a vendor uh, and be able to automate an end-to-end -end process as fast as possible where they truly understand what each step of the process is, what, what the data that is required, understand how to extract that data, give relevance and context and validation to that data so that way they can make a very fast decision. So we see this emergence of these smart platforms, whether you call it RPA, whether you call it intelligent automation, whether you call it a combination of RPA, BPM, and, and enterprise content management, whatever they pe people want to call it, but these smart platforms we see emerging as, as a new way of innovating for customers and helping to accelerate 
uh, their business applications and processes. And for anyone listening, I'm, I'm conscious we've covered a lot of ground in only 30 minutes. And there's going to be some people want to delve in a little deeper and maybe got a lot of questions to ask as well. So can you remind those people where they can find you online and also contact your team if they do have any questions? Wonderful. I'm at, um, on Twitter, I'm at, at BD Orcutt is my Twitter feed. I'm on LinkedIn as Bruce Orcutt uh, with Abby, and then uh, www.abby.com is the best way to get access to the information about Abby, and all of our contact information is available through that through that resource. So I highly recommend people engaging with us and and coming to us with interesting challenges. We always are up for uh, new and innovative challenges to solve. So. Well, I love what you're doing and love how you're creating this new class of AI technologies and providing digital workforces the skills to understand enterprise content and processes. And not only that, your technology used by thousands of enterprises in multiple industries. But more than anything, just a big thank you for coming on and taking the time to share that story and the great work that you're doing. So thanks again, Bruce. Wonderful, Neil. Thank you very much. Organizations are faced with new challenges associated with the rise of the digital workforce and need guidance and solutions on how to successfully marry artificial intelligence with human intelligence. It's not one or the other. It's the both of them that will help deliver that success. And if you didn't make the Content IQ Summit, don't worry because I just bought it to you. And I think it was a great opportunity to learn how organizations can equip digital workers with the cognitive skills to understand enterprise content and processes to make those intelligent business decisions. Food for thought. But we have all just heard what was said at the summit and we've took those conversations outside of the venue And they're now spreading all over the world. And that's something else I love about technology as well. It isn't just events are now busting out of those venues and those conversations are spreading rapidly. So over to you. I'm going to pass the microphone over to everybody listening. What are your thoughts on today's conversation and the topics we've discussed? And you can do that by simply emailing me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. Tweet me at Neil C. Hughes and we'll keep that conversation going. So a genuine heartfelt thank you from me for tuning into this podcast. I really do appreciate you listening to the podcast and, of course, for getting to the end of an episode as well, which I know is a big ask. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.